Oh!
sure look fine. Call me dog, but I ain't blind. Smoke house man is back in town. Call me up when your love comes down. Call me Willie, the one and only Willie Brown. Yeah, I'm loving all you women two by two. Ain't gonna stop till the love is through. It's too hot when your turn, baby. We can feel a while, smoke house burns. Call me Willie, the one and only Willie Brown. Yeah, call me Willie.
I could hear Robert Thompson's voice and I just screamed, I can hear you. I had tears were streaming down my face. It had been so long um, waiting, waiting for this opportunity. Cylinders are made from compact wax and have very fine grooves. They can be read by a dictaphone, but with the cylinders being so old and fragile, there were some hurdles. Of the eight wax cylinders, two had to be repaired before the recordings could be digitized. with Dr. Edwin Seaborn. They participated in making these recordings with Dr. Seaborn. Uh, Robert Thompson speaks Nishna Bemoin. He sings songs, he tells some stories, and his wife Eliza then becomes the translator and translates concepts into English for us. These recordings in particular, they sat on a shelf for 80 years. Um, nobody even knew they were there. Nobody knew the significance of them. And so I didn't want to see a digital file either end up on a digital shelf for the next 80 years. I wanted to see this knowledge become a part of the community again. The 1976 Indian Act and the creation of residential schools barred Indigenous people from practicing their religion or culture and created a gap in these oral stories, making these recordings all the more valuable. These uh, important things that we're trying to teach young people about uh, citizenship, pride, about identity, uh, a lot of that stuff's missing from the history books, from public education. Pukan, who also hails from Saugeen First Nation and is an anthropology PhD candidate at Western University, took the audio recordings back to her community. I was scared. I really was. I was afraid that, um, that maybe people would think I shouldn't be listening to them. I thought maybe... Um, I thought it would, people would be angry that finding out that these things had been sitting in a museum for so long. To hear him from those recordings just kind of really gets to me because it's like he's reaching from the past or from beyond and to the present. It's pretty, a pretty awesome feeling. I can't speak the language, but I can understand it. And that tears me apart. We did ceremony. We still do ceremony. The language is there. We still have the language, but we need to reinforce it more. And to bind that, the gap between the younger generation, the older generation, within all the families, it's really, really important to know who we are. And to have this type of connection, it's just so beautiful. Hearing these recordings and hearing Robert Thompson talk about himself, his family, what they'd been through over hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, it's, it showed me that Anishinaabe people are resilient. They are strong, they're ad, you know, adaptable, they're um, industrious, and they know how to think for themselves.
you down well oh so soon you were a flower what may death come in. cut you down well oh so soon
picture that I will know so soon. You were a flower, one may death come. Cut you down with an old soul soon.
lived in a little <laughs> tiny shack, two bedroom little shack, and that was one of the roughest times in our lives. And there was no indoor plumbing, no uh, kitchen facilities, no bathroom facilities. I felt that deep in my heart that I have to do something for, for this particular family. My name is Vernon Root, and I've been a, a chief of this community for a number of years. From the days where I used to haul water and bring it into the house, and where we would have to go outside to the outhouses. We've developed a housing program that I'm pretty proud of. The Skills Training Centre is uh, employment and training within um, Saugeen and First Nation. We started off by having a, a training program in place uh, and uh, we were gearing up towards getting a certification. At, at that time uh, they were offering just a, a card to say that you were trained under uh, carpentry and I wasn't satisfied with that and I wanted a provincial ticket for the boys. Each summer we employ a majority of the students that do apply for employment. This year we had 49 students over an eight week period. I was just looking for work right after I was done high school. I did a, a carpentry program before that. I basically know how to build a house step by step. Other First Nations should adopt this training model because um, it's easier when the training is on the reserve. It's more hands-on, it's more comfortable and the apprentices see the immediate benefits of their work. There is not enough people in the trades right now, and especially if you are qualified, if you are educated in the electrical, plumbing, any of the fields, carpentry, doesn't matter what it is, and if you want to work, you will always have a job. I was very proud of how my house was built. I was very proud of the workers, and I feel that we need more Native workers like this to work on our reservations, to, to build our homes and keep them employed and things like that. We have now houses that have water. Uh, we have decent uh, sanitation facilities. We also have those important factors as heat and also the room that's required for a family to grow in. My dream comes true. We've got a beautiful home. Our kids are happy, we have a beautiful community, and we love it here. Never could have imagined that we could have had a house this beautiful. Our housing has come a long way, so I'm really proud of that.
I am Anishinaabe. We are Anishinaabe. I am Anishinaabe. We are Anishinaabe. We are Anishinaabe. I am Anishinaabe. Win. We are Anishinaabe. I am Anishinaabe. We are Anishinaabe. I am Anishinaabe. I am Anishinaabe. We are in the snobby. I am in the snobby. I am in the snobby. I am Anishinaabe. <laughs> 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 <laughs>